is Spectra. Alternative Myths. Homeopathy. The secret Society. Hypnosis. The Paranormal. Alternative Energy. UFO. Abduction. The Weird. The Wild. And the Wonderful. With your hosts, Tom Theophanis and Scott Jordan. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Spectrum Radio Network on BBS Radio 2. This is Scott Jordan here with my co-host, Tom Theophanis, and remember, there's no such thing as too much information. First of all, I'd like to wish everyone a happy, nondescript, politically correct, religiously and culturally non-offensive, all-inclusive retail holiday season. How you doing there, Tom? <laughs> I'm really good. I'm really good. I like that. <laughs> Covering all my bases. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, tonight's guest is uh, Ben Stewart, who's an internationally acclaimed filmmaker, activist, and musician, who is best known for his films Esoteric Agenda and Chimatica. Uh, these films are thoroughly researched and thought-provoking and are highly recommended. Join us tonight as we discuss his films and the nature of human consciousness, and how this relates to the societies that we have built in this world. How are you doing, Ben? Great. Actually, that's a, that's a great intro. Gives me a lot of insight as to what we could even talk about tonight. <laughs> I like that. Good. So tell us a little bit how you uh, got into this filming industry. Well, um, it was more by... Uh, I guess if you want to say the genre of the film industry that I got into, that was a little bit more not really planned out. I was, I've been in uh, music for quite some time, and a lot of my lyrics had to do with some of the, most of the messages that you would hear in Esoteric Agenda and Chimatica, but I really have never had any plan to get into the genre of making films um, and doing what I'm doing now. Um, it sort of chose me. Um, at one point in the band, I was actually trying to work on some video footage that explained some of the lyrics because I had had a lot of people asking what the lyrics were about. And what I did from that point was I just decided that I was going to make a 15, 20-minute documentary, something you know, short, sweet, to the point, explaining the message of the group, of the band, the lyrics. And... It eventually turned, as I was going through it, um, I, I began doing a lot more research. And a lot of the footage that I was bringing in, I started compiling. And it turned into 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, and then eventually two hours and six minutes of uh, the information that became Esoteric Agenda having nothing to do with the band. So after I released that, I just decided to throw it up online. I really had no intentions of what it was going to do or no expectations, I should say, of, w of what it was going to do. And it really took off quite quickly. And I had a lot of people, um, saying that they were a little bit, uh, in the dark it, as, as much as the end kind of explained some of the, uh, some solutions to the problem. They, they still wanted more explanation as to how to apply those solutions So I decided that I was, I was going to take the next one uh, quite a bit more seriously as, as to the way it's composed and organized. And that's what turned into Chimatica because um, I basically I, I saw that there was one side of, or one type of genre, this self-help motivational law of attraction type um, uh, marketing out there. And I saw that and I appreciated it for what it was, but I saw that there was a, a huge missing element to all of that. And that had to do a lot with the subconscious mind. And so I, I began delving deep into um, into depth psychology. Obviously, Jung came up, Wilhelm Reich, um, Eric Newman, uh, I mean, Sigmund Freud, all the way back to some of the old philosophers and eventually uh, deeper into um, the mystery religions and um, a lot of occult science, if you will. And I began realizing that Uh, that that whole side of it that is solutions, which is is a big part of my work, as opposed to um, basically just sitting here and saying what's wrong with the world. I try to give as many solutions as possible, and that's that's kind of how it turned uh, turned into that. But I didn't want to be disingenuous. I really wanted people to understand that it's it's not just about staring at a vision board and and getting the things you want. Because the things on a vision board are typically going to represent your ego. They're not going to represent what you truly want. Um, because most people who, who really don't 
take much time on self-reflection and, and uh, their own consciousness, they begin to desire those things that will only instantaneously and for a very temporary period of time uh, massage their ego, basically. I call it psychological masturbation. And basically, it's um, I, I saw a huge missing link to all of that, and which mm -hmm. is the subconscious mind, and it's a lot of that darker content that pulls from a lot of our, our um, primality, a lot of the primal impulses we have, and it goes far beyond that. But just sticking with that, that was what I tried to uh, bring about in Chimatica to show that, yes, there is a law of attraction. Yes, there is a, a, an amazing power of the mind, but it only comes when you are truly conscious of every activity, every impression that enters your consciousness and how you behave according to those environmental signals. If you're not conscious of it, then you're going to keep uh, recycling back the same, you're attracting back the same things that you've always had in the past. So that's pretty much this, in synthesis how I really got to where I am with the films. And I just assume that all the emails that I've been getting of people saying what they like and what they dislike about Chimatica, I take that to heart. I take that very seriously. And the next film is going to reflect what I've learned just from so many supporters and even people that I wouldn't consider supporters, but those people that send those borderline hate mail emails, I, I do read it with an open mind and, and try and understand where a lot of um, their... Uh, what they're associating it with, where that is coming from, so I could hopefully make it a bit more accessible to people along those lines that typically wouldn't like it. So I keep trying to evolve in my research and, and in the films, and it really does get into um, not just the information you put in the films, but the way it's presented. Because, again, it's the film could turn into uh, somewhat of an entity on its own, and if that entity is abrasive or it's too uh, in-your-face or uh, too authoritative, like you're being told what to think, then, um, then people aren't going to want to listen. So the attitude of the film is also very important, and that's what I'm trying to take into consideration uh, even more in the next film. The film, the film I, I noticed in Chimatica, uh, the one thing I would say is it's, it's almost like a conversation. Yeah. It's like I asked you a question... And you spent the duration of the film answering it. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm actually very glad that you um, bring it up that way, actually put it that way, because the one thing that, uh, specifically in Chimatica, um, I, I kind of grew with this understanding from Esoteric Agenda into Chimatica, uh, like I was saying, it, realizing that the way that I present it is going to be the way that people perceive the attitude of the film. So I wanted to be very, very careful um, to make sure that it felt conversational instead of being like authoritative, like I said, like and being told what to think. So I wanted to feel a little bit more like a conversation. So basically I, I focused on the tone of the voice. Um, the rhythm of the music and everything else to um, to really just set up that atmosphere so that it's it's pleasing to the ears rather than just being you know yelled at. Which there there are a lot of um, there are a lot of people out there that do this very well, and there are a lot of times people kind of need uh, to be to be spoken at in a certain way for them to actually get the right association from it. But that's not how. Um, that's definitely not how I wanted any any of Chimatica to come out, or any of my work, uh, for that matter, um, because the nature of my the nature of my work is really to allow the audience to allow the the other person to think for themselves. Plus, it's not how you're wired. Absolutely, you're not you're not, yeah. you're not wired that way. You're not. You have to come across as you. You have to come. You can't come. If you can make up a, a you, you can make up a role and you can play that role. But it comes across much, but people can pick up on that. Absolutely. So, yeah, and I, I never try to underestimate. Um, I try to be very conscious of the fact that people, as, as I've gotten a lot of comments of saying that, yeah, Chimatica is extremely, you know, complex, and you really, really, really have to pay attention to get, um, you know, to, to get what's going on. But I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that there are, there, there is quite a lot of information in there. Um, but I think that, Everybody that I know that has watched it has come out of it, even if they didn't understand every little bit and piece, they understood the attitude and the direction of it. And I've asked many people, um, what do you think the, the, 
the over overlying or the underlying message of the entire film is, and nobody has really um, answered that um, in a way that I that I kind of had to take a step back and be like, oh, well, I, I didn't plan for that. Everyone pretty much says says the same thing, which is like. Um, it pretty much says self-governance, sovereignty, sovereignty of the mind, sovereignty of the emotions and the consciousness um, is our own responsibility. And we can't hand it away to anybody, so we have to think for ourselves. And that's honestly the biggest trick is a lot of the times we don't realize how much energy and power we're actually giving away. We don't realize in many ways how dependent we are upon our community and the people around us to approve of what we're doing so we feel good enough to keep going with something. And that's uh, that's one thing I definitely wanted to stress yeah. over and over and over again in the film. And how easily we fall into line and don't even know we're falling into line uh, and just do things because, well, that's just the way it's done. Well, maybe, maybe that's not the best way to do it, you know? Right, and I mean... It's, it's really understand, uh, really um, exciting to actually understand the dynamic between any, any community, like all the people within the community. And if you look at it as, because um, uh, I did around the esoteric agenda time, I did kind of have a, a still a little bit of the old me that, that wished people would kind of see things my way. But that was part of my... Um, that was part of my, my growth. I, I needed to, to realize that to really get to the point to where Chimatica is, to where now every single person with their own quirks and their own um, you know, individuality, it's extremely important to have that balance, almost that, that perfect recipe that gives us what we have. Because what we, uh, what we look at with all these indiv uh, individuals is this is how we project all of that subconscious material. And... In many ways, uh, I have a lot of people that say about my work that I, I'm, um, what they believe I'm trying to do is to revolutionize everything, uh, you know, create revolution to cause uh, large scale changes um, to societies and things like, and the way that the system or uh, the machine, if you will, uh, the way it's working right now. But first, I think one step that people typically miss in, in what I say is. It's not actually safe uh, on, a, on a large scale, uh, not just humanity-wide, but even in a single nation or in a single community. It's not very safe to those individuals to completely eradicate everything that they have built and sublimated their subconscious mind into. So if things were to change very rapidly, and a lot of the times we don't have the ability to, obviously we don't want to stop change or halt change or anything like that, but instead of trying to force change, which is not organic, um, based upon seeing, okay, there's a bunch of problems in our society, let's just force a change, I don't think that's very healthy because uh, people having less than 3% conscious awareness of their own, um, all, all of those primal modalities that they have within their subconscious mind, if they were to radically see a change in their environment and to radically see um, uh, everything kind of fall into pieces, then all of that sublimated uh, subconscious content that they used to project into their society, the fabric of their society, will go away and they'll have nowhere else to project that onto except for the, their surrounding um, people, members of their commu uh, community. And we see that a lot, uh, like, say, in, in struggling times, uh, like Katrina, if there's any natural disasters or if there's wartime in war-torn countries, you'll see that when the, the landscape, uh, the mental landscape and the emotional landscape change so rapidly that people don't really know how to sublimate or project any of that subconscious material out there anymore, then they don't know what to do with it, and it just seems to come out in uh, vast amounts. And they take, they, they take out all these primal modalities on, um, on their community. And really that's when we see um, the degenerating areas with high crime rates, high rape, um, looting, theft, um, areas like that is, has nothing to do with, uh, with evil or, or uh, degenerate people. It has to do with the fact that um, th things are changing so much within their community that they have no idea what to do with all this subconscious content. So it just comes out in, in the only way that it knows how, and most of the time that's violent.